What's up, guys? Welcome to the Hazard Clay Podcast. We are live from G's home. I'm a special guest today. Actually, he, well, he's the guest on our show, but I'm the guest at his home. I've been staying here for about a week. G, welcome to the show. Yo, what is good? And we got Skyla too. What's up, Skyla? Skyla Vera in the house right now, sitting on my lap. <laughs> She's excited. She's wearing her new beanie and new kith. Dude, I'm uh, so tense, and she's just like all styled out, hanging with us. I've been wanting to do this uh, interview for such a long time, bro. So many people have interviewed you on camera, but I haven't. Yeah. So this is the first, and I'd be like, what? What would I ask Gerard? What would I ask G? I think the first question is, um, Gerard, how has it been being a father? Eleven months into being a father, how how's it the journey been, bro? Yeah, Skyla just turned eleven months, and man, it's the absolute greatest gift and blessing of my entire life you know as an entrepreneur one of the greatest feelings you have is when you create something out of nothing and it actually you overcome the hardship you overcome the obstacles and it starts to scale and you're like yo it's working like the thing that i've been devoting my life to my blood sweat and tears to and it's scaling and i used for me that used to be like like the best feeling, right? Mm -hmm. uh, especially, I remember with like Elite Daily when we won an Emmy and all of a sudden we got an investor and things are taking off. And for me, that always was the best feeling until Skyla. Until Skyla. Until my first little like, beautiful baby girl, our beautiful girl um, was born and I got to just witness my beloved Ashley give birth to our ba beautiful baby girl and, Amazing. and just see what this miraculous creation that's the beyond God. anything yeah the miracle daddy. <laughs> yeah uh, she, did she, did she say daddy yet daddy. <laughs> yeah she says daddy yeah yeah dad dad oh there we go dad, dad. she said it <laughs> yeah <laughs> you want to stay for the show baby she's excited yeah. she's gonna be going thank you my all right mom. that was a good that was a good cameo by skyla you're <laughs> forever in the house of clay <laughs> All right, so you've been a creator for 20 plus years, made documentaries, won Emmys. We've done the show together. A lot of people don't know. That. We're going to go into that story also. But as a creator in general, entrepreneur, how did you, how did you get into this, bro? How did you get, get into becoming a creator? Like, what was, what was the, the spark? Honestly, I feel uh, it's – I don't feel – Creators are born. I feel like we're made. And I feel that, well, here, here's what I'll, I'll say. God is the ultimate creator. And that lives within each and every person that is born. I mm -hmm. do believe that. And then I feel that we have this amazing imagination and creativity as a child. And some, some, some people, you lose that. And that gets taken away from you for, for whatever reason. You know, something happens, you get bullied, someone tells you to shut up and like not that you're not good enough or whatever that is. And you feel different and you can end up never pursuing a creative path because you feel that you're not, you know, you're not good enough or that's not going to turn into anything. And I was blessed to have a mom who inspired me and she was an artist i saw her working with glass in the garage and oh, i wow. see my mom like actually being an artist and then she would have the camcorder and she always would like empower me to like be creative and she would record me and i begged my parents to go to art school when i was a child but i felt so different it was like it was like i was like almost like scared for anybody to really know that you were an artist that i was an artist and so my dad put me into art school i went to a museum to learn art and I actually have it in my here, my library, a picture that's up I from saw when it. I was 11 years old. And it's just like an, a part of me. And, and then there was this chapter in my life where I was like, oh, my God, like, I'm not good enough, mm. you know? And that's when, like, business became the, the focus. It was like, how can I learn about business? And I feel like that's today. And today is what's amazing about today is, like, you're seeing this beautiful dance between being an artist and being an entrepreneur. Yeah. And I was blessed to be able to... to step into both of these archetypes but i didn't feel like i could make it as an artist that i was good enough to be honest with you as a young man i feel like every artist feels that and then yeah and I, honestly mentorship you know you i told you but like mentorship has changed my entire life and that's why i'm constantly seeking mentors because mm -hmm. mentors have a way of of 
showing you that it's possible for one. Two, they have a proven path and system that you can learn from. Mm -hmm. that then you can follow and I can help you to achieve your goals, right? And three, they're able to help you to learn the skills and the tactics and the strategies that are really important that will help you so much faster than trying to do it alone or even going to school. Yeah. And so for me, finding my first mentor was hard. I was, it was such a blessing. I remember just asking all my schoolmates in first semester in college, like, does anybody know anybody who's like made it? Does anybody know anybody that's using this internet thing? You know, does anybody know anybody that's like understands stocks? 2003, just for context, right? Yeah, 2003. And someone was like, yo, I know this young, this kid like that I grew up with that like made it. And so I was like, can you introduce me? And they drove me to his house. And I remember just pulling up to a house like this, bro, like freaking three car garage, basketball court, pool, walking in, pool table. Like the great Gatsby. Yeah, I was just like, yo, this is sick. I remember this young man coming down the stairs. I must say young man. I'm talking like 18, 19 years old, you know, redhead kind of guy. He's like a year older than you? Yeah. And basically I was like, yo, is this your parent? Like, what do your parents do? This house is insane. I've never seen a house like this growing up because we didn't grow up with money like that. And he was looked at me and he was just like, yo, this isn't my parents' house. This is my house. Ooh. And that's all I needed to hear to know, oh, snap, like it is possible. Mm -hmm. And from that moment forward, I just became an apprentice. And that's why I'm excited about continuing this. We've always had this apprentice program and we've been talking about launching yeah. the next one coming yeah. up here soon for oh, creators oh, that want to be an oh. apprentice. Yeah. And um, I became an apprentice. You know, and I just sacrificed. I did what I needed to do. It wasn't about the money. It was about learning. It was about being a fly on the wall, doing whatever I could to learn and to be of value, mm -hmm. to give to this mentor, to go get his coffee, to go get lunch, to, whatever to print out what needed to be printed. Back mm -hmm. then, I was like faxing companies for him to get clients and just doing anything and everything and asking good questions and being someone of value. And he taught me how to build a newsletter. He taught me how to understand an income statement and a balance sheet. He taught me how to build community online and, and understanding how to use online marketing to create a following. This is before Instagram, before YouTube, before all yeah. this, but through email marketing and then how to monetize it. Wow. And that led me to being inspired to start my first newsletter and my first online forum called Stock Spot, which I've talked about. And uh, that turned into my first real business. I became a millionaire by 24. I had amazing, amazing uh, experience learning how to take my first client for $500, turn that into $5,000, and then just grow it. And I've experienced like the failure from that. Um, you know, I have an amazing story of, of this opportunity that came to me, my first ever client who came mm. to me had a nanotechnology company. And uh, I remember I became so passionate about helping market this, this company that was reinventing the battery. And I did a documentary on this battery and I built them to have the largest shareholder base out of any small cap company at the time. And... It was 2009, 2008? Around earlier, like around there, Two. 2006, seven. And the company was up 400% while I was marketing it online because he was like, man, this young guy like understands this internet thing and no one was using it back then to help market public companies. And so I helped this company and then I was like, yo, we should hold the first ever public demonstration. So we, I, he's like, you do everything. So I booked this venue, I, I get the room packed, 300 investors and people from the media to give the first ever public demonstration of the nano battery. Yeah. And... I go up there, it was the first time I was on stage. I was so nervous. I say, I'm Gerard Adams. Here is the investor relations director. And this is why I believe in this company. This is what I believe about the nano battery. And then I introduce the management team, the CEO and the chief scientist officer. They go up there and they just go to demonstrate the battery to prove that it works, to prove the concept. And they were going to raise tens of millions of dollars to take it into production. That I thought this your was, life. This was going to change my life. And they just hit that button, man. And crickets, it didn't work. And I just was devastated. I thought my career was over, bro. And uh, one guy came up to didn't me. Didn't they test it before or something? They were supposed to, but they didn't. Oh, man. Came up to me afterwards and was like, one guy came up to me afterwards and was like, hey, kid, I'm surprised you got me in the room. Call me. And that's when I realized that I had a gift of getting attention. 
Mm-hmm. That's when I realized that creator like, in you. yeah, I had a gift to get people in the room, to get people paying attention, to help market a company, to help to create eyeballs, to create awareness and leverage it. And so that's when I was like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to offer this as a service. And I started an agency helping to create awareness and do marketing for these co- type of companies that were innovative, built that to 10 million, invested the money in the stock market, stock market crashes between 2008 and 2009, lost all my money, had to sell all my things. And then that's when the next chapter of my story began. Where so you yeah. went from pretty much rags to riches story. Yeah. Back to rags. Yeah. Started again. What do you do next? This is already, now we're talking about 2010, 2012, like Facebook is alive. Uh, Instagram is a thing now. Yeah. This, during that era, you start again from zero. Yeah, Ned, this is that era. So now yeah. all of a sudden, social media is starting to really pop off, right? Instagram is starting to come alive. YouTube's, YouTubers, like this is when that, that, that's begun. And I was like, yo, where is there a publication online that's for gener- our generation by our generation? And covering culture, covering business, covering fitness, covering technology, covering everything, dating, covering all these things, right? Yeah. And because I was like buying all these magazines and publications that were all different, like Maxim and Rob Report and Entrepreneur, like all these different. I was like, where's the one stop shop for everything? And so that was it, bro. I bought the domain name with two co-founders that were my interns, that were my apprentices, that were my apprentices now. And like we we got that domain name for nine dollars and ninety nine cents in a apartment with folding chairs and decided to hustle and we were, but we loved it so much we had so much fun building this we were so passionate about building this publication for our generation you know what i'm saying it was like a deep purpose for us and it was like we had chips on our shoulders we were like yo f- like fuck the new york times huffington post all these big publications that by the way became strategic partners of ours yeah but we had a chip on our shoulder we were like all these big companies like buzzfeed that raised hundreds of millions of dollars and like we're a bunch of young kids and people doubted us people were like ah forget about this little block <coughs> site it ain't nothing they look a bunch of college kids and so we had a chip on our shoulder we're like yo we're gonna we'll show you a bunch of little college kids or a bunch of young bucks like and so we just, we figured out how to understand the algorithm. We figured out how to leverage Facebook. We figured out that we needed 80 to 100 articles per day. We figured mm-hmm. out how to write hooks and headlines and how to capture people's attention again by driving traffic to these different pieces of content mm-hmm. and then monetizing that content. We got 80 million users per month visiting the site. And then Daily Mail, really? I tracked down the CEO of Daily Mail because the COO of BuzzFeed announced that he was let it, not going to stay with BuzzFeed, leave, and make, become the CEO of the Daily Mail. So I tracked him down at a Morgan Stanley event, waited for him in the rain, pitched him the idea of Elite Daily, said, come to our office, just please check us out. We really want to have you as an advisor. So and you're literally waiting outside in the rain? In the rain. You're waiting outside for this guy to come out. Yeah. For just a chat, does he know you? No. So you're like waiting out there because – I think you just brushed over it, but like you're waiting outside with the hopes that you can actually meet him. But you already had uh, this idea and intention of talking to this person for a specific purpose. Yeah. That's crazy, man. Amazing. And then he came to our office, fell in love with our culture. We had a sick culture. It was like our own little young Facebook. And then he, uh, in six months, went from being an advisor to acquiring our company. Wow. It was a dream come true. I just turned 30 years old. My co-founders just hit 40, Forbes 30 under 30. We celebrated. It was a crazy journey. It's a whole other story of what goes down in a boardroom when you have a billion dollar company trying to buy you for that kind of money and you have co-founders and you have venture capitalists invested in you. Mm-hmm. It's a That's a movie in itself. But that was a big, beautiful chapter of my life. And then after that, the next chapter, the third chapter has been with you. You know, it was like, all right, now the new media publications, the new era of being a content creator is us. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Is 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 you, the person listening to this right now? Yeah. Like, you're the next publication. You're the next big media brand. It's you. Yeah. You're the one that's gonna move. You're the one who's gonna make create a movement. You're the one who's gonna be able to have the following and and launch yes. any product or service. Mainly because of you being of service to a community yourself. You are becoming the voice of the next generation. And so, like, that to me has been the new wave. And that's been the mission that me and you have been on for the last seven years. Going on season seven with Leaders Create Leaders. Mm -hmm. Going and finding the 
creators that are out there that are ready to become the leaders and voice for the next generation. Yeah, and you saw this um, obviously so clear back in 2015. I think during that time, people were starting to kind of like see what this idea of like you or a personal brand or becoming a, you know, work, work from home or create content as a living. Like it was still abstract. But uh, I remember when I met you, um, you had just uh, opened a, an Instagram account for the first time. You were not public facing your entire career. You were not public facing. You were not an entrepreneur that's posting your whereabouts or anything like that. And all of a sudden, you have an internal uh, uh, feeling that this is the, the future. God moment. Yeah. And you speak to your family about, because you've shared this <laughs> Yeah. You speak to your family about becoming a, a content creator or the idea of, of opening up a public profile. What happens with that? Yeah, and you know, how many of us have family members or people in your community that, to be honest, don't get it, right? <clears throat> they're not gonna understand. And so they're gonna doubt you, they're gonna project their own insecurities onto you, and believe it or not, my family even did that, just from out of love, you know what I'm saying? It's out like, of love, yeah, like, yeah. It's just out of love, my, my mom was just worried, you know, my mom, my father, even my, my other mentor was just like, nah, don't put yourself out there like that, like that's gonna create evil eyes, and that's gonna become, <sighs> you know, a way for people to, to attack you, and just a lot of this fear projected onto me that, it was going to create negativity and yeah. you know truth be told it does like i've had a lot of haters i've had a lot of people this past year people tried to cancel me at 20 12 000 hate comments on one post yeah, was... you can make mistakes being a creator you know you're putting yourself out there you're not going to be liked by everyone and i think that's why it's one of the greatest ways to also grow as an individual and as mm -hmm. a person it really teaches you to learn how to accept yourself so that you can express yourself and stop caring so much what other people think and just be yourself and recognize that that is enough and that some people are not going to understand your journey. Some people are not going to understand or see your vision. That's okay. It's not for them to see. It's about believing in yourself and knowing that it's possible for you to become a celebrity of your own world, your own universe. And we, we're not different from anybody else. The Kylie Jenners, the Chris, Ro the, the Rock, you know, the big celebrities that we've seen that have used a personal brand to create billion dollar empires. There's no difference between you and them. If you look at Oprah, if you look at The Rock, if you look at Kanye, you look at any of the huge influentials in, influential leaders in the world, they have come up stories too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like my boy E.T., Eric Thomas, you know, was eating out of garbage cans. You look at Tony Robbins, sim similar story. Like these big leaders, the leaders that have created these empires that are worth billions of dollars are like you listening to this, like me, mm -hmm. that didn't grow up with a silver spoon, that had it hard. But that story, that part of you that had it, that is going through it or has been through it, like that's what makes it unique. Mm -hmm. And so you think that you need to put on all these extra layers and put on all these masks to be able to become likable or, or influential. No, 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 no. It's the raw version of you. It's the authentic. They, it's mm -hmm. the come up. It is the, the story of you having to overcome and still having a little bit of that chip on your shoulder. And, you know, for me over these last few years, I've also learned that it is about truly coming into a, a new awakening of yourself yeah so okay and let's talk about i want to talk, talk about that actually so you and ideally like when i think about even even just working me and you together from 2016 2015 2016 because we met in 2015 but we started officially the leaders created show march of 2016 the messaging or this the the messaging was more about the hustle mentality the grind and it slowly has evolved into more of a, you know, season three of Leaders Create Leaders was called Conscious Creators, right? And it, it's kept evolving. Yes, you it's know, not it's kept new. Evolving. It's kept evolving. How, how much is it different, like, from day one, like, I'm talking about 20 years ago to right now, how much has your messaging changed and, like, what's causing that change? To be honest with you, one of the biggest revelations I've had recently is that it hasn't changed. Like, it, in the sense that, I actually can look back at my career and I'm like, man, I remember the very first video me and you shot wearing a jacket saying leaders create leaders before we even created the show leaders create leaders. Yeah. Like this has been the message from day one that, you know, it is about becoming a leader, not a follower. Mm -hmm. It is about leading your own movement. It is about being 
aspirational believing in yourself and then going out there and creating the success that's that's achievable for you if you truly believe and you put in the work it's it's about the balance between grinding and, and living. living yeah you know Which what is, i'm that saying was a, that was one of the first videos that we shot yeah yeah bro it's like this is the, and, and creating has just been a part of our entire journey mm -hmm. i just feel like we are all adapting and it's becoming more mainstream now people are recognizing holy like when we started personal branding was still kind of like eh, like looked down upon to be honest i mean it's, it's there's still a lot of negative connotation around it yeah to now a extent. it's different now all of a sudden it's a hundred billion dollar industry now all yeah. of a sudden one in every four people are a creator you know what i'm saying now all of a sudden you see artificial intelligence that's coming out and and helping people with creating copy with, with like helping people to edit the videos, videos and helping people to be able to do the research and you don't need a 30 person team like Gary Vaynerchuk anymore. Correct. So that's, that's something I want to talk about also in a little bit. I want to get back to the story, your story. Um, there's a few things that I want to touch on. Um, first off is like how you conceptualize content. I want to talk about that. I want to talk about that, but I also want to talk about how that, process has changed over the years wow. so originally when you yeah. would conceptualize content like we had like a there's a there's there's, there's iconic video that we have is like we're coming up with this framework of how we're going to shoot lcl the first season yeah, which we right. really didn't have like a like we didn't have a blueprint we were coming up with it as we were creating the blueprint that we believed based on both our experiences combined together this is the way to do it yes yeah and um a lot of it was like documentary style Mm -hmm. where we would reverse engineer an episode. So we would film an episode, we would film an interview, and then we would find the nuggets to create the, the story or the, the messaging behind it. Um, and then a lot, of the, a lot of the content on your social media is like, because um, you have a gift of being able to, like, you have the gift of charisma and the gift of being able to speak to a camera, but not everybody has that, right? But, and this is, this is where I'm going with this. So ideally, like, how do you come up with what you're going to speak about on a video? That's a great question. And I wanted to speak to the last part right before I jump into my, the way I conceptualize content with those individuals that have a hard time being in front of camera, which mm -hmm. is we've seen it, right? We've yeah. seen some of the most successful people in the world and, and, and all of a sudden we put them in, a camera in front of them and, and boom, it's so scary. It's, it's, I have a post going up right now about the fact of like the fear of public speaking is more, uh, it, it's more of a fear than death itself to people in the world. Like, it's so scary. And so I understand that. One person recently told me this, and I was like, man, this is really powerful, and I've been working with it, but just like mirror work. But like really getting comfortable with yourself. And so if you're listening to this, get in front of a mirror every day. Look at yourself in the mirror, man, and speak affirmations out to yourself. Mm -hmm. Get comfortable with you seeing you because I really truly believe that when we can get comfortable in our own skin and really come into accepting ourselves, then we can come into that through that acceptance a way that we can truly express ourselves to the world and re recognize also that it's actually bigger than you. Mm -hmm. It's not about you. It's about who you're serving and the audience that you're serving. When you become obsessed and you fall in love with that audience that you're serving, that, can, that they can see a piece of them in your story, and that now you can help influence and inspire their hearts to go and believe in themselves and to create a better life for themselves, that is so rewarding, so fulfilling, and give that a chance. Mm -hmm. But you gotta accept yourself. And so practice looking at yourself in the mirror, practice getting comfortable with yourself. And so I would say as far as conceptualizing content, man, one thing that I love now is and you showed this to me, and my mentor, Ed Milet, has, has talked to me about this, is mm -hmm. like getting out into nature. Mm -hmm. And first thing in the morning is like getting out, and getting outside, going for a walk, listening to some music, allowing my mind to be open to ideas. Right when I leave my house, I think of something that I'm proud of so I can get myself into this energy of optimism and mm -hmm. just this this really positive energy and, and it's obviously this energy of gratitude as well. And then just go for a walk. And there's something about being in nature, right? With some music and you get away from the screens for a little bit that you open yourself up to new ideas. And then just a 30 minute sprint when you get back, a 30 minute sprint to just writing. And I know you like to do the 30 minutes but as soon as you wake up. Yeah, I do and it so, a little bit different, but yeah. A little bit different, but just that's that kind of concept is, and then I feel like that's the most valuable thing we can do as creators right now because ai is is you know is 
changing the game in regards to like taking away jobs. BuzzFeed just fired thousands of people from of writers and and now we have AI to support us, but our creativity, our imagination, our ability to think of the ideas and piece them together, that is the thing that is going to be the most valuable thing right now. Mm -hmm. And so creating intentional space to get out and go and think about that and contemplate. One of my favorite books is The Art of Contemplation. Mm, and I've never so, heard of that book. It's an amazing book, and it's teaching you how to create space. It's teaching you the power and the art of giving yourself intentional space to contemplate and for me that's like the god pocket you know what i'm saying like we talk about jesus mode and i also think about god pocket like when you can create the god pocket we all know what that is, little voice yeah, inside yeah. of you T right? tell me more about the god pocket the what god is pocket is like essentially we have an intuition right some people call it the intuition we have our in own inner intuition mm -hmm. For me, it's also this inner voice that's, for me, connected to God. It's my relationship to the ultimate creator. Like, yes, we're all creators, but if we can create a clean vessel that's connected to the ultimate creator, right, God, then it's, it's, we're able to get those downloads. Like, for me, whenever I've created space and intentionally prayed and created space to connect with God, typically getting out in nature and asking God, talking to God, praying to God, Man, I've gotten so many answers. Like if it wasn't for that, creating the God pocket and creating that space to connect to God mm -hmm. after selling Elite Daily, I wouldn't have had the inspiration and the motivation to go all in on my personal brand and start Leaders Create Leaders. Leaders Create Leaders came from God. This isn't, I'm a steward. You're a steward of this idea. The Creator Collective, we're stewards of this idea mm -hmm. to create this community. But this is, you know, this is for me, it's, it's about creating the God pocket getting that idea and then listening and having the courage to actually go and put, take action on it. Dude, that's, yeah, dude, that's fucking powerful as fuck. Can we just cut that up already? <laughs> 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 nah, dude, it's, it's, uh, well, the God pocket, man, yeah. it's so powerful, man. I'm like yeah. trying to digest it. I, I, so, I see it so clearly, like the full alignment, being in your, being in God pocket, being a, uh, Jesus mode is like a, is another thing. Like God pocket, Jesus mode, you, you yeah. spoke to me about this a few days ago, how going on these walks gets you into that Jesus mode, you know, going this, because there's something about walking, this momentum you're, you're getting, but you're still be, you're, it's not like you're working out either. You're not like running or you're not physically like lifting weights or anything like it's, it's, a, it's a different form of, of uh, creating momentum. And you get to a point where you're at Jesus mode. You know, fully focused. Jesus on the mode is is focus. Focus, yes. Like you're super, super focused. But you know what's funny about the Jesus mode, and we're talking about the God pocket as well. I talk about God pocket with my brother Brandon Collinsworth a lot. When we step into that state, if you watch the Chosen, me and you last night, think about think about how how, how guided right. we are. Yes. That me and you, randomly, we've been we've been working. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But randomly last night we came up, we came in, it was almost like one in the morning. We've been mm -hmm. shooting with our buddy Roberto from Metaverse. We kicked up. I was like, yo, we're going to pop something on. We popped on The Chosen. It just yeah. randomly played this a scene that I just saw that is Jesus. And he was talking to John and John, and he was telling John the Baptist about how not everyone is going to understand your stories. And that's okay because John was questioning him. Mm -hmm. why are you doing what you're doing why are you doing all of this and he's like yeah people are gonna hate people are gonna not understand again not understand your stories mm -hmm. but that's okay it's not meant for everybody and the thing about jesus when he creates these stories if you watch the chosen he, there's a scene where he literally creates solitude yeah. he goes out near the swamp and he's by himself and he's and practicing and he's he's creating the god pocket he's creating the god pocket you know what i'm saying jesus. so that now he gets the download he pieces together the idea and then he goes and delivers it to the people yeah but if you don't create space if you don't create that god pocket and create that space and you're just, and I've done this too, and you're just constantly on the move, constantly just pumping out content, pumping out things. What happens is, is that uh, it's not as powerful. It's not as powerful. Because you have to think about the intention and the impact of your content. Mm -hmm. And now we're in the era of like getting really creative with it, right? Mm -hmm. Like how do you take storytelling to a whole nother level and I think that's what you're the best at in the world. Well, thank you, brother. I think you're the best at in the world of, you know, taking these ideas. That's why I work with you. I only, I only work with the best. <laughs> Same. I, I, only, I, only, I only fuck with the best. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, brother. You know, I, I believe in, like, excellence. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Your excellence. Yeah, there's there's that going back to the chosen. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you so much. Uh, before I forget, there's a there's a scene in the chosen before he speaks about the like the people won't understand. John's questioning why he's in solitude so much, right? John's questioning Jesus, why are you in solid solitude so much? And if I remember clearly, Jesus responds to him, because I'm preparing the sermon, a powerful sermon. Those were his words. So I see it when it, when it, when we put when we put that into us being in Jesus mode, creating content. You have to be in solitude to be able to create a powerful message. That's the that's the download. I love it, bro. And the, and the fact true. that we saw it at that time of yes. night when you we were gonna look we were gonna be we we're, I think we had chosen Wakanda. We were gonna do Wakanda. For we were like again. it's too long, but we're not gonna be able to watch it. And then you randomly chose chosen. That scene was just uh, very. You know, because we've been we've been in yeah. this uh, Jesus mode. I, I, what together. I recognize too is like the best creators in the world right now, they have a very specific system and process and routine that they follow. And so, if you want to do this at the highest level, one, you gotta have fun. Two, you gotta love it. You gotta have a clear why as why you're doing it, and you have to have a routine, a process. A system that works for you and what works for me may not work for you mm -hmm. you got to figure out what that is for you but i believe when you can balance getting out in nature you know as much as we need to use ai artificial intelligence it's also important for us to be connected to ai ancient intelligence old Correct. philosophy getting out in nature routines, the original intelligence god yeah. created and like balancing that get out in nature journal or write whatever that looks like for you for me i still like putting a pen to paper but even if you use your phone your notepad or your computer you gotta you know read and and for me it's also movies maybe for you it's podcasts music is huge but like you got to figure out what works for you to that allows you to get into your flow mm -hmm. and there that's and you got to protect your flow at all costs you got to protect your space at all costs because we live in an era where there's so much distraction all day every day people fighting for your attention and you got to treat your attention like gold. a commodity yeah. like gold like yeah. it's it's social currency you know what i'm saying you got to protect your social currency you got to protect your flow you got to protect your energy you got to protect your attention so that way you can actually be intentional and maximize the time that you do have to build your movement to build your community and to play at the highest level as a creator. I love that, man. I love the fact that you have a, like what you said right now, and I should have, I, I guess I guess the question is like, what are the best, what, what is one thing that all the best creators have in the world? It's like, it's, it's like a, routine, a routine that they stick to, a, a process of them creating um, this content. And um, not necessarily content, but it's like the process of creating ideas, ideation, and yes. distilling, distilling that information to something that's uh, like, can be understood by a mass audience yes because that's what jesus was also great at too like you talk about the, this parables like i remember reading parables since i was a seven well, eight the, year old he's the master yeah the master creator yes. master creator that's why god came down you know what i'm saying and mm -hmm. showed us through jesus yeah what is possible that's why it's so cool to see that like how powerful our words are how powerful that like we as human beings, like yes, AI is around and can do that for us, but there's like the way that, like I feel like it's so powerful how, how us as human beings have the way to deliver a message. Even though AI now is like populating voice and video, all the things, you probably soon won't be able to know the difference. Yeah. Uh, but I think that's to me is the still the art form of that we have right now that where it's an important time to capture your original thoughts. I really want to talk about some of the stories of Leaders Create Leaders and the inception of Leaders Create Leaders. Um, originally, when we launched Leaders Create Leaders, there was no- Leaders Create Leaders, Creator Collective, let's go. Yeah. When we launched season one, we didn't have somebody to model after. How much faith did you have to have in me, but how much faith did you have to have in you to be able to to believe that we could do this because yeah. we, we didn't have anybody. To well, I can be honest with you. Like there's two things, right? Like one, you gotta, you gotta be willing to do something different if you want to achieve a different result. 
And for me, like it's always been really important to to be a to, to be a trailblazer. I feel like there's it's it's so different when when you st- want to stand out and you take a different approach. You're able to get it's scary and it's uncertain, it's uncomfortable, it's hard. But you set yourself apart. And then people will copy you. Like so many people have copied the show since then. And that's okay. I, yeah. People are doing that right now with these animations. That's okay. That means you did something right. Correct. But if if you feel like if you really wanna if you wanna achieve greatness, you have to be willing to to do uncomfortable on certain things. But I will also say the second thing was like I'm a little bit of a perfectionist and I learned I'm been learning to let go of that. And yeah. I think you are too, where it's like oh, we yeah. care so much about it. And I think if there was one thing I learned, it was like we were doing it so different. And I feel like it's important for you all to realize that like it doesn't need to be perfect. It's just about like just start and put your put do use what you have and do what you can, but put the energy into it that and do the best that you possibly can, that's what really matters. Yeah. More than what, anything. What part of the journey have you enjoyed the most? Honestly, I would say the in-between moments. The best part of the journey for me has been the moments when nobody sees me and you in a hotel room and I have to see you cry because you miss your kids. And I see how much you're investing and how much you care about what we're doing. The best moments for me are being in a hotel room with you in London and seeing you edit and... You know, and just, yeah, man, going for walks with you along, you know, the the Big Ben River and, you know, being in a tunnel with you in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and, like, a, a young man who's on his way to work, like, walks by us and literally is like, no way, and hits us and is like, yo, check my phone, and is watching Leaders Great Leaders, an He's episode. I mean, leaders. like, I can't believe I'm meeting you guys right now. I'm literally watching an episode right now as I'm walking to work. Or for me, like, the in-between moments of, like, when I went to Jerusalem and I'm walking up to the wall to pray and put a letter in the wall and a young Jewish kid looks up at me and says, yo, leaders create leaders. Thank you for the show. Like it was all these moments where I've met the community that have been my favorite moments, our meetups, meeting the people, meeting our community and and all the moments of me and you working behind the scenes, the late nights that nobody sees of what it took to actually launch the show that were so meaningful to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that, I cherish those moments and all the laughs with you, all the, all the prayers with you, all the cries. Um, it means a lot to me, man. I'll cherish that for the rest of my life. And that's why we're co-founders. You know, me and Jeff have been working on an epic partnership. We never even incorporated leaders, great leaders, man. It's always been about the community, never about, you know, anything more than that. And, and in the pen, during the pandemic, we finally got an LLC. We just got trademarks this year and we're taking it to a new level with the creator collective, you know, bringing this community together and calling all creators all over mm-hmm. the globe. You know, yeah. let's rise together. You know, we want to help you to build your personal brands. We want to help you to grow your communities. And we want to help you to learn how to scale your own online business. Yeah. Be a voice for future generations. What, we're, what we've done over the last few years together, um, also having people be that. You know, people, yes. people can be that. Yes. We need the next Gerard. We, we need, need the next Digital Jeff. Yes. We need, yes. We're calling we all creators right now. All yes. All creators. We yes. We got to do this together. And it doesn't have to take you 20 years. And it's know? like, it's not about competition anymore. We're living in an era of a collaboration right mm-hmm. now. And that's what we're building. Yes. So if you're looking for a community that you want to collaborate with, that you want to learn from, that you want to grow alongside, that's going to challenge you, empower you, and equip you so that you can become a leader and a voice for this next generation and learn how to grow your community, how to build your brand, how to be able to scale your online service-based business, you know, how to tap more even to your purpose. Like, let's go. We're here and we're creating the most epic community right now for creators on the planet. Let's fucking go, bro. Leaders create leaders. Leaders create leaders. The Creator Collective, apply now. There's going to be a link down below. You can apply now. You'll be learning directly from Jeff and I as well as well as like our network um leaders that have been on the show uh hand selected coaches and you'll just be learning consistently all the top strategies tools everything that this is our life so we're just going to be sharing with you an open book of everything that we're doing and we're learning and no this is what we're devoted here. to no secrets we're gonna everything's out on the table yeah what i love about this is that 
we also we're still students, bro. That's absolutely. A, I think that's what. The, Yo, but, absolutely. We're like, not but, here. But to, now we have more people <laughs> as part of this community. Yes. You know, the collective is all all of all of us together helping each other, um, and also obviously with with what we have already like that we've discovered through a lot of uh, trials and tribulations. Trials and tribulations. Um, and I, dude, this is so it's so powerful. Like me being able to show this to, like to my kids, like uh, Jordan wants to be a director, a filmmaker. Like me being able to show this to him, um, the process of what I do and what we do, uh, it's just a, a shortcut, man. It's like the like the um, what was that the school of Alexandria where like all the like Plato and all these people. Man, that's so, what I'm excited about, man. The Los Digital's, you know, <laughs> your your kids are spectacular. Your wife is incredible. And Thank the you, support brother. that I've seen them give to you and the belief they have in you and the fact that they've moved all over the freaking country to, for, for our mission, for your mission, like shout out to each and every one of you. Um, I just, I really, I really respect your family and I love your family so much. And so like, I'm, I'm stoked because yeah. they're, they're the future, you know what I'm saying? They're yeah, the future right. creators. To be a part of this too. Now we got a space for all the future creators, man. This is the most exciting time for me to be a creator is right now. Even though I've been doing this for twenty years same, too, same. I'm more, I'm way more excited right now than when I started day one. And I'm all, I, I was super passionate day one because you got to be passionate as fuck day one. But even right now, I feel like that. I still have that chip on my shoulder. I'm still yeah. hungry. I still want to, yeah. you know, uh, continue creating with. And, and it's even more exciting now because there's more people that we're connected to. You know, and like you know? we're another, you know, one of the examples that I want to share with anyone who's listening to this too that thinks it's too late to start is like, look, listen, me and Jeff can easily be sitting here after seven, after six seasons of our show, after six years of being like, man, we could have created the Creator Collective so many years ago and had a million freaking members of our community all together right now. And we learned. So if you're not making mistakes, you're not moving forward. And the only yeah. way you fail is if you give up. But you gotta, you gotta test, experiment, and try. And you learn as you go. And and even now, more than ever, it's it's the perfect time to launch the Creator Collective and build this community. And so I hope that's an inspiration to anyone who thinks it's too late. It's not. We could have easily been like, oh, it's too late, to and, start. and have all this regret and and think about all the things that we did wrong and all the mistakes. And it's like, no, let's let's be grateful for what we did do, the brand that we've built that is built on a foundation of our friendship yeah. and our devotion and our sacrifice and our blood, sweat, and tears. And shout out to our team too, because it wasn't just us. You know, Vic, Vic G, G, Mike, Truman, Nicole. Like we have a I'm squad. A you know what I'm saying? Chris is with us right now. Like we had so many people, Devad, like so many dope ass creators that have been a part of this Leaders Create Leaders journey. And so just know that we see you. We appreciate you. It wouldn't be what it is for every person who's watched an episode that's commented it, that's shared, that's come up to it. Like you guys are because of why we've kept going. Yo, look who's calling me right now, Dunk. <laughs> yeah. Yo, Elliot. Shout out to Elliot, man. Yo. Yo, Elliot, man. What's up? You're on the podcast. Say what's good. Oh, uh, he just dropped off. Yeah, so she, <laughs> he, heard, he heard the call, man. He heard the call. Calling all creators, Calling Elliot. all creators. Let's go. And uh, so, yeah, man. Let's do this. Yeah, join the collective, guys. We are in search for you. If you're a creator... Join the movement. Be part of it. Like this is gonna be the biggest. Yes. And by community. the way, we have a free community. Yeah. You know, so have. like uh, we we do have opportunities to be able to get coached directly by us. And even if you're just getting started, you know, like we have so many resources to support you. And so calling mm -hmm. all creators, you know, we have a, we have a home for you that can really support your growth. And um, let's let's, let's do it, man. Keep creating. Yeah. Keep creating. Let's go. All right, it's a wrap. Peace. You got time, bro? You good, right?